Hello friends, so I'm a few hundred feet away from the shore now and uh, the new um, propeller uh, works great. There's almost no wind also, so that helps. And uh, my battery wasn't fully charged on the last run. And the old propeller actually rubbed a little bit against the motor casing, this one doesn't. So yeah, uh, it's really a nice day to be out on the water. And um, yeah. So yeah, I've had it running about 20 minutes now. Everything seems great. I'm still slowly going further, uh, deeper into the the Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake. Uh, probably gonna turn around here at some point and head back. So yeah, this isn't really like a swamp setting where I envisioned uh, this propeller to be used. And this boat isn't right either. You probably want more like a pontoon type boat. And uh, you know, this is a three man boat. It can seat um, almost 800 pounds. So it's a little bit on the large side. So if you got a smaller boat, I think this uh, propeller would work really well. And uh, yeah. We got some nice graffiti happening on the this big uh, smokestack just west of Salt Lake City. And then there's like a castle thing down here, like Sol, Salt Terror, I think it's called. Um, I don't know if that's it or if it's further. Oh, there it is. They have like raves and things there, I guess, is what I've heard. We have a speedboat. <laughs> I don't want to zoom in too much because I don't want to spy on people or whatever. But yeah, I think I've gone far enough. Like, I don't want to go too far where the, suddenly the battery dies and then all I have is my two little, like, um, rowers or whatever you call them. So I got to keep it within limits, I guess. But yeah, hopefully... Uh, hopefully this demonstrates uh, the capabilities of this propeller and what it can do and yeah this is uh, the Great Salt Lake it's basically a dead lake there are tiny shrimp in there but uh, as far as I know there's nothing else um, if you swim in it I guess it burns your, your flesh and uh, you know it's probably more buoyant than regular um, seawater or lake water because of the high salt concentration so yeah, uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. See you all again next time. Bye for now. So yeah, maybe I'll just ramble on uh, because there was some AI like uh, bot personality on my last uh, video that said there was too much music and not enough talking. So, um, yeah, I'll just rattle off a bunch of crap. Uh, basically, the original egg design is based on a design by Victor Schauberger. And um, well, I'm getting some waves here. Maybe I should head back. But yeah, Victor Schauberger, um, the turbine, trout turbine, I think is what he called it. It's actually more of like an implosion, or a impeller, I guess you would call it. It's supposed to fit on the front of a boat, and with a pontoon boat, you could actually put it on the front of a pontoon boat and then uh, sort of flip, flip it around so the, the head um, is in the front and pulls the boat forward. In a future design, I'll probably do that, but a pontoon boat, the one I want is... Uh, it's about $800, so I was thinking like I might actually uh, just make my own boat. There's some weird waves that suddenly emerged, like 
there's something under the water. Um, it's kind of weird. They got pretty big there and now they've disappeared. Hopefully there's no Loch Ness Monster or maybe like submarines, military submarines that like secret, secretly uh, use the lake or something like that. I know that uh, Utah is like the home of the secret space, um, you know, fleet or whatever you call it, Solar Warden, supposedly, so underground they're building crap. But yeah, anyways, uh, I don't want to say too much or else I'll get in trouble uh, by um, the weaponized trolls or whatever. So yeah, so anyways, uh, what else can I say? Yeah, it's really quite peaceful out here. It's uh, it's nice. It's nice to get away from everyone because like there's no one around for like quite a long, um, you know, like half a mile away is uh, the nearest person. So I actually like it. It's, um, I mean, I can hear the cars from the highway over there, but other than that, like it's fairly isolated. It'd be nice to come out here maybe sail right to the middle of the lake and just turn the motor off and, uh, you know, hang out for a while or something. But yeah, anyways, back to like Victor Schauberger. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice, it'd be neat to make uh, something like his, um, it's sort of like a submarine. It looks like a big egg, but it's a submarine in the front of it rotates and there's different uh, variations of it but it's all based on an impeller uh, concept rather basically pushing like well instead of pushing water it like uh, it sucks water it's sort of like the opposite of force it's more like based on the implosion principle and you know a lot of like free energy systems are based on implosion rather than explosion like for example, fossil fuels, um, you know, they all deal with explosions, like the chaotic, um, uh, the chaotic chemical reaction of uh, combustion, where it's basically just chaos and uh, an explosion. Whereas implosion is far more um, energy efficient. I mean, I guess uh, one analogy would be the difference between nuclear fission and fusion, where um, you know, fission is like explosion where you're breaking, the, you're splitting the atom into smaller parts, whereas fusion, you're actually, uh, you're fusing two atoms or more together on the, um, I think it's the nucleus of the atom that fuses, which actually yields more energy than the chaotic, uh, division, the explosion, uh, potential. So that's one example of how, uh, you know, how the, um, order prevails over chaos, I guess, <laughs> to put it one way. And so implosion-based systems or impellers, uh, you know, they, they don't destroy uh, in the process. Like they actually, they build things up. Like there's a, a gradual escalation in complexity. I mean, it's hard to explain, but I think uh, Tesla's, uh, um, Radiant Electricity, um, it did the same thing. It, there's a good book on it. Uh, it's called um, Secrets of Cold War Technology by Gary Vassalato or something like that. And in it, he explains the uh, Tesla's um, wireless electricity. And in the book, he says that it actually has a cumulative effect. Like when the system is running for a long period of time, it actually becomes more efficient over time because there's sort of like as I said before, there's like increasing complexity. Like there's, it's almost like within the ether, there's like a structure that develops that continues to branch out, sort of like a tree growing. So yeah, uh, I'm just rambling and I hope my battery will last. <laughs> I'm still way out there trying to get to shore. Uh, it says it's that full still. So I think I'm good. Um, I'm at full power. It's still kind of slow, but it's a lot better than before. And there's no wind, so that helps. And it's warmer. It's like a nice day. So yeah, it's good. It's a good time to uh, do this. 
So yeah, uh, I guess uh, that brings me to like the Lily and Peller. I know people like to, to talk about that a lot and uh, you know, the inventor of that impeller based it on um, I think a water vortex. He was able to capture a, vo a water vortex. Um, he like froze the water while it was spinning or something. Somehow he got a mold of like the perfect uh, form, vortex form and based his impeller on it. But because of uh, conventional boat designs, uh, it hasn't seen any use in um, the mainstream uh, screw propellers for boats. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, still in great condition after the first, uh, its first test run. And uh, I had it on continuously for maybe like 40 minutes. So yeah, I think what I need is actually a stronger motor. This is the 36 pound uh, motor. So I think maybe like the next one up would be better. Like the, the 50 pound, uh, motor or something like that or even a gas powered one like a two horsepower or whatever whatever this boat can handle i'm sure it can handle more it can handle almost 800 pounds so i'm sure it can handle more than this thing which weighs uh 25 pounds maybe The, uh, the electric uh, trolling boat motor that I bought uh, is a 36 pound uh, thrust. So it's kind of on the smaller end. And uh, so I'm thinking maybe I should buy a bigger one, maybe a 46 or a 55 pound uh, thrust motor. And I could use like the same propeller Hello friends, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to blab a little bit more. Um, I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed uh, going out onto the water today. And uh, it was um, it was fun, it was really fun. So I'll just say a few more things. Um, so yeah, so conventional uh, screw propellers basically, um, are very uh, chaotic and they um, they use force to basically disrupt the water uh, to such a degree that it um, destroys the uh, the magnetic um, properties of the water like it uh, you know it's like instead of aligning all of the magnetic uh, domains the um, the chaos of uh, the regular conventional propeller um, you know orients all of the, the the atomic structures into a chaotic pattern where well which ultimately um, causes the overall uh, magnetism of the water to be um, destroyed or at least nullified to a significant degree so 
you know, the difference with this kind of uh, propeller or impeller is that it doesn't um, do that to the water. It's a much smoother, kind of gentler um, way of, uh, of slicing through the water and it doesn't um, it doesn't disassociate the atomic structures and instead it does the opposite it, it aligns the atoms so that the magnetism of the water actually um, increases so uh, you know it, it promotes uh, health benefits and my plant experiments kind of prove that I plan to to redo them to show um, to show it better uh, what it does and uh, you know so yeah anyways and well there's more to it I guess the conventional screw propeller also causes um, cavitation on the back ends of each of the blades and cavitation is when um, kind of like a low pressure zone that is created but it's it's so extreme that uh, a pocket actually opens up um, which causes drag, um, significant drag, and also causes the metal to, to become pitted and it uh, destroys the metal blades. And there's a propeller uh, called like the, the Shero propeller, I think, that um, kind of like has um, a somewhat more uh, curved, kind of like a torsion field um, curve to it so that there's no cavitation zone and uh, it's supposedly like 30% more efficient than French than conventional propellers. And so, I mean, the egg isn't, uh, as far as I know, isn't more efficient, but at least it doesn't destroy the water's um, natural magnetism. So, you know, it's of, of benefit to, uh, to the life force energy. Um, <laughs> it could help lakes. Uh, and, you know, it's good for like, to drink or to have showers in, in uh, water that's been spun with this. Uh, some people would call that structured water. Um, you know, there's different names for it. Uh, you know, the, there was that Japanese dude um, who did the experiments with water and uh, he, like he sent, uh, well, he, he found that when you freeze water, it forms into different structures based on the energy, like the emotional um, frequency that is sent to it like uh, law of energy creates created like perfect uh, crystals like ice crystals whereas like hate energy created like a chaotic uh, pattern I mean you've probably seen that already it's it's cymatics basically I mean emotion powered cymatics within the vibrational etheric field and uh, you know that is like a form of telekinesis or telepathy where you're affecting uh, inanimate, supposedly inanimate uh, phys physicality with your own energy, your own uh, frequency, broadcast emotion in other words. So yeah, um, uh, what else can I say? Uh, so I've redesigned the, um, the egg propeller uh, that's on the, uh, the boat it's a five blade system, but the old egg was four blades, but it also had little um, like dimples in it. I don't, it's hard to see, but there's like little dimples, which actually cause uh, resistance like to the flow. So I've corrected those dimples with the new blade or the, the new egg, I mean, and I'm gonna have a new egg available with five blades and without the dimples and I plan to resin print it and maybe sell those, but then also um, copper plate it. And then I want to test the copper plated egg with the plant uh, experiment to see how much of an improvement that is over the previous egg. Because the, the original egg had like a 5 to 10% increase in plant growth. So I'm assuming the new uh, egg that's copper plated with five blades and smoother will have an even greater uh, effect, maybe like a 20% increase um, with the plant growth. Because with my distilled water showers, I use the resin printed um, egg and I can already feel a difference. I mean, this is highly uh, subjective and um, 
you know, there's no way to, for me to quantify this scientifically, uh, you know, because it's just, um, it's, I mean, it's a feeling, but it's more, it's also like um, certain uh, like perceptual faculties change. Like, like my eyesight, for example, actually improves and um, there's just, I think my overall frequency goes up. Like there's a greater feeling of expansion and kind of presence in the moment. And sort of just like, it's like easier to move my body too. Like I feel lighter and like faster too. Like there's an acceleration that happens where uh, somehow it's like um, you're just faster. Like you're smarter, you're quicker your intu intuition like brings things to your mind much faster that uh, are related to what you're thinking about. So it's just easier to, to think in a continuous fashion. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna test that out. And I have a number of other projects uh, going at the same time, but uh, yeah, it looks like my time is running out. So uh, yeah, that is all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time. Uh, bye for, bye for now.